beautiful Scorpios. First and foremost, happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful queens, empresses, all of you beautiful, strong, powerful, amazing, nurturing, caring, and loving mothers out there. I want to send a big old fat shout out to all of you for your hard work, for your efforts, for giving your children the love they need, for helping them to become their greater versions of themselves, instilling morals, values, principles, just ethic. I give you all love. I send powerful, powerful love and light to you all. And I definitely tip my hat out to all of you single fathers out there that are playing the role of mommy, putting ponytails in your baby girl's hair. I give you all the love and light. I thank you all for your hard work, just for just, you know, making sure that the world is a better place in the future, because those are the ones, our children are the ones that's going to be taking care of us when we're too old to do so. So it's very important, you know, to instill those, those qualities, you know, instill those values, you know, but, um, so happy mother's day to everyone. I hope you all enjoyed your day. Um, I welcome anyone that may be new to the channel. My name is Q. I too am a Scorpio. I am also an intuitive and empath and I channel messages clairaudiently. Uh, so what we have playing right now is we have Q-Tip and the name of this song is called Believe and it's featuring D'Angelo. So I feel like a lot of you all, there's a sense that you've been holding on to hope and optimism. It's like you believed that you were capable of something or you were capable to overcome or defeat the odds, defy the odds. Uh, that believe, that believe is, is giving me the energy of like hope. Um, like you've been wishing for something in particular and now it's like something is manifesting. Um, the lunar eclipse may bring forth something that may be hard for you to believe or unbelievable. Uh, but I feel like, as I said, because you've held on to that vision, um, you've held on to that hope, you've been optimistic, you may have been healing from past circumstances and situations. It's like whatever that belief is, you holding and standing your ground in that uh, particular circumstance, it's like that's what's helping to manifest or bring something into fruition. Um, we have a Mel. LaRoe and the name of this song is called Infinite Possibilities. So just as I was saying, I was getting like that star quality energy, someone who has gone through tremendous pain and hurt, but they didn't give up hope because they believed there was a better outcome. They knew it was their birthright to have some sort of um, opportunity present itself or some better opportunity present itself, something more uh, along the lines of success and a victory, um, an answered prayer, a miracle perhaps, but with infinite possibility, that is a strong indication of the hope um, of the ground that you stood. You stood perpendicular in your square, you stood erect, you stood your ground, um, and you most importantly spoke your truth and demanded your respect ultimately. And so now there's opportunities that are presenting themselves. I'm getting a sense, like I said, that you're being recognized and rewarded uh, for your hard work, for the fact that you didn't ever, um, you didn't ever give up. You believed you could and you did. You believed you would and you did, you know, and, and whatever anyone could have been potentially trying to convince you of, whether that was you weren't good enough or you weren't, um, you weren't valuable enough for them, whatever these feelings or notions that were directed at you because of someone else's insecurities or them projecting their insecurities onto you. It's like, you never, you never accepted it. You didn't accept that as your truth. I feel like you guarded yourself and protected yourself from any of that. And you found your own sense of grounding, like you found your grounded, um, that grounding, you found that balance, you've come into harmony with something. So there's some infinite possibilities um, that are being presented. I just feel like there's 
doors of opportunities that are opening up things that may have been delayed or opportunities that could have potentially have been blocked or someone trying to sabotage them. It's like there's an opening because of the belief, because of that optimism that you've held on to. So that's what I'm picking up just intuitively from the song. Um, these are general messages. So my spiel is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, just let it fly by. Know that you're more than just your sun sign. So check your other placements for a more clear and concise message for you. Um, my readings are also timeless, um, except for on special days where I do want to, you know, give homage and give love to you all. Like today is Mother's Day. So I do want to, you know, take note of that. So, but other than that, my readings are uh, timeless. So whenever you find yourself clicking on the video, um, that was divine timing intended for you all to do so. All right, beloveds. Whew. So let's do some house cleaning. I call upon the elements of water fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit, ashe. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, most high God, our creator, to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, and Baba Ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment. Help me to pick up on the energy, number, synchronicity, and vibrations of my cards. And so it is. So mote it be. Ashe, ashe, ashe. So right now we have religious love playing. And we have the number 13 on the bottom of the deck for um, the numerology. And then we have music. So with religious love, um, I'm definitely feeling like somebody could potentially with 13, that's the death, the ending of something. And then we have effort. So perhaps there was no effort made in the past, which led to the demise of a connection, of a friendship, a relationship, a love ship. Um, and now there's the sense with this 32, someone may want to communicate a message. Maybe some of you are Claire Audion, or maybe some of you are music musicians where you express yourselves through song, uh, through lyrics, or, or maybe someone could be potentially thinking of you while listening to music. Um, this is someone who's feeling these very strong feelings of love because this 13 does break down to four. Four deals with the heart chakra. Four is also the divine masculine, the emperor in traditional tarot. So this could be a masculine who is thinking of how um, profound their love is for you or how they didn't take it to the next step, but yet they still feel these strong feelings. Maybe someone's doing some deep diving, you know, reflecting, soul searching and realizing that their lack of effort is what led to a demise. Um, they also see your your transformation. Uh, they see how much you've changed, how much you've evolved. Uh, they see you in your power, very independent, you know, self-sufficient. Um, this is someone who also has witnessed you recover, rebuild, um, and just rejuvenate your spirit overall. You're just renewed. There's something different about you. There's a purifying um, essence, you know, that you're exuding, like you've evolved, like you've ascended, like you've gone through some sort of healing process. And it's very beautiful. It's very attractive. And I feel like this person, when they hear music, they think of you. Maybe this person has a particular song that they could be listening to on repeat. And it's because the song actually communicates everything that they may be feeling. Things that have been internalized that they may want to express to you because this 32 reduces to five, which is the throat chakra. So this is somebody that really wants to communicate someone that you may not have been communicating with. You may have blocked this person because 32 is five, four, 13 is four, five and four is nine. So this person wants to change perhaps the dynamic of the connection that the two of you have. I also feel like they may feel you're very guarded. Uh, because you have created like a sacred space or a protective bubble. You're in a very protective place where you've created boundaries and they're trying to figure out how to initiate some form of contact, how to spark a conversation, how to express this love, this religious love that they're feeling for you. 
um, and they are receiving downloads or some sort of nuggets of information, nudges from spirit to communicate, to take that, take that step forward, to enact the change. Nine with the 32 and the 13, which is five and four, nine is the highest number of change. So this person is very optimistic about changing the situation. I feel this person feels you are wish fulfillment. Um, this is someone that you could have potentially uh, found yourselves walking away from uh, because maybe they were playing games. Maybe you felt like you were giving and you weren't receiving anything in return. Maybe this is somebody that could have potentially taken you for granted. And now this is someone who's in deep reflection um, in your absence. They feel you uh, very strongly. They feel your love. They miss your um, presence, you know, in your life, in their lives. They miss you being there in their lives. Um, we have Missy Elliott, Beep Me 911. So... When you beep someone 911, that's like an emergency call. So this person is definitely potentially like in a space where they're trying to play it cool because the name of this is the name of the album is called Super Duper Fly. So they're trying to play it really cool, really suave. But this is something that's very urgent. Like they want to communicate with you. When you beep someone 911, it's like, yo, call me right now. I used to have a beeper. I'm telling my age, I'm 47. I'll be 48 this year. But back in the days when we had beepers, it was like when somebody beeped you 911, you had to go find a pay phone, beloved, and go find out what was going on because we didn't have the cell phones like we do now. So that 911 page was like, yo, something going down. You need to pick up the, to pick up the line and hit somebody up. So this is somebody that could be coming in with urgency. This is somebody that feels a sense of urgency to reach out and communicate with you. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead, see what's coming and going out, going on. My beautiful spirit, my beautiful angels and ancestors and guides, help me to pick up on the energy, number synchronicity and vibration for my beloved Scorpios. Let's tap in, tune in, see what's coming and going out, going on. So, my beautiful Scorpios, what do we have? So, there's definitely somebody who feels like you match their fly or they feel like you're super fly. Like, you know, like I said, because you've transformed, because you're just like in this new light, you know, you there's this new air of perhaps confidence. You know, maybe some of you all have changed your appearance. I get a sense that some of you all may have cut your hair very short. Um, a lot of people, when they go through something very... Um, traumatic or they go come out of a very toxic relationship or a very um, a very uh, heavy cycle you know it, it's like it's it's very liberating for some women to just cut off all their hair um, I'm getting a sense like if you had long locks some of you may have cut your locks off and you may have like a very shaved a uh, uh, close, you know, haircut, like very close, um, almost like what, you know, I don't want to say what Jada Pinkett did, not as short, but something very short along those lines. It's just, you may have cut off all your locks and you just feel very liberated. We know that your hair is like your antenna. So, you know, when you go through certain experiences, it's like that, that energy is in your hair. So a lot, that's why a lot of women feel liberated after they cut their hair off. Uh, you'll notice that's like a thing that women do. Um, men don't like it, you know, because, of course, the the physical, um, you know, they're looking at it from a physical standpoint and not that that spiritual um, standpoint where this is just something that they feel they need to do to liberate themselves and to, you know, unburden themselves. Because, like I said, your hair, that's also energy, you know, so that's why you'll find a lot of spiritual practitioners. They'll wrap their hair. They'll cover their hair. Um, but I do feel some of you may have cut your hair very short and now your hair could be growing in very nicely, very long. Um, and it's just making you super attractive. Like you're very beautiful. Somebody finds you to be very beautiful. Even if you're masculine, if you've had, you know, long hair for a long time, some of you masculines could have found that you may have been like balding in certain areas. And maybe you just took the liberty of just shaving it all off and embracing it. Maybe some of you are going gray and you've been just using just for men, trying to dye those gray areas. And you're just saying, you know what? I'm going to be my authentic self. I'm going to let them grays pop out because that is a sign of, 
my my growth. That's a sign of me becoming wiser. You know, uh, you don't get old, you get more refined. So I this, just feel this a sense. There's a sense of acceptance, accepting oneself, accepting your truth. Accept, it's like take me, love me or leave me alone. Like that's you're just in that space where you know your worth and value. You know, you know what you deserve and you're going to show up, you know, ex, you know, presenting your truth, your authentic self. And so I feel like by you doing that, initiating that, um, you're going to start attracting others who are being their authentic selves. So let's go ahead and cut this deck and see what's coming and going out, going on for my beloved Scorpios. I'm cutting the deck three times. So as I was cutting the deck, there's four cards that just flipped over. So I'm going to take these. The bottom of the deck is synchronicity. Some of you all may be seeing, you know, 666 because this is the number 87. Um, so you may be seeing 666 because 87 reduces to 15. That's six. Or some of you could be seeing 888 or some of you could be seeing 777. Um, I've been seeing all of the aforementioned. I've been seeing 666, 777, 888, 444. I've been seeing all of the numbers. Some of you may be having very synchronized events. Um, there could be all kinds of downloads that you're receiving at this time, especially being, um, you know, that lunar eclipse is going to be taking place in our sign in Scorpio. So there's a lot of transformative energy. There's a lot of things that are, uh, you know, it's like the undercurrent. Something is really happening behind the scenes and you could sense it. It's like you have the sixth sense, you know, and so it's like trust your intuition, trust what you're feeling um, because there is something that's coming, something beautiful. You know, you're on the precipice of change. So the cards that flew out is we have teaching and learning. So a lot of you are and have become like master teachers. You have grown your spiritual strength. You have ascended through the experiences you've had to overcome, whether those were relationships, love ships, friendships, colleagues dealing with, you know, um, toxic dynamics in general. Um, there was a sense you've been learning how to assert yourself, how to stand erect, how to communicate and express your feelings and talk from your perspective. Uh, and then there's a sense of you also teaching those around you because you've become, you know, a teacher, a healer, like I said, through first teaching yourself, healing yourself. Um, and so with this teaching and learning, the number 57 reduces to 12 and that reduces to three. So this has taught you to become that divine feminine or masculine. You're someone that is seen as very strong, powerful, wise, uh, very loving, very nurturing, very successful, very abundant, um, and also creative. So you are birthing new ideas, new ways of thinking, um, some of you could be with child at this moment. So, you know, congratulations. Or some of you are just very protective of your your babies. That was something you learned was to prioritize your life um, by not putting your needs and wants to the back burner or that of your children, but putting those things to the forefront. Um, there's more of a sense of nurturing, uh, being very maternal, being very paternal. If you're masculine energy, protective, a provider. Um, but this S, this energy is also very attractive and very alluring to those that could be watching because you do have others learning by watching you. So they are seeing you, like I said, transform. You're going through a transformative period, which is making you very attractive because that 57, like I said, reduces to 12, which becomes three. And that is the energy of the empress. That is the energy of femininity and masculinity um, because that divine feminine is balanced. She knows how to uh, utilize all of the elements around her, just like an alchemist or a magi. Um, she embodies all of the characteristics or he embodies all of the characteristics of that queen or that king, you know, the queen of swords, king of swords, queen of cups, king of cups, queen of pentacles, king of pen. Like there is an energy that you know how to utilize all of those elements around you. And you carry those same characteristics and attributes, which is why you're able to balance out the scales. So this is powerful energy. And we have R. Kelly again. And the name of this is called Don't Put Me Out. So someone doesn't want to be put out of 
uh, perhaps the circle of friendship. They don't want to be put out of your life. Um, they just don't want to be in opposition. I feel like this is somebody that really wants to be um, in alignment or wants to be a part of your life. Uh, this is, could be someone that you have cut off, that you may have ghosted or someone that you may have, you know, purged during your dark night of the soul period when you were protecting yourself, your energy, and you was getting rid of all the things, the people, the circumstances, situations, the belief systems, ideologies, habits, behaviors. You was getting rid of all of those things that didn't serve you. This person could have been someone that fell in that um, line of, of disposable, um, you know, disposable, uh, I don't want to call it trash, but just dispose, you disposed of this person along with all of those things that you saw um, as being um, not beneficial to you anymore. So the next card that came out is personal growth. I can't make this up. So you have grown. You know, there's been this new emergence. It's like you have emerged someone very sharp witted, very sharp period. So it's like you speak body language, you speak energy, you have a sensitivity intuitively, psychically, uh, you're very wise. Um, you're also very intuitive. So the others see you as someone that has, um, grown tremendously. This personal growth is the number seven. That's the crown chakra. So they do know that you are very, very sensitive. Uh, seven is also the chariot. So that chariot represents strength, balance, harmony, but it also represents confidence and assertiveness. So there could be someone that could be approaching you very confidently, uh, someone who is looking at you as, um, you know, like that, that, that very, um, it's like they're looking at you as someone or something that they truly want to encounter. You know, it's like they want to be in that space with you. They want to share that space with you. We have Melissa Morgan, and this is called Fool's Paradise. So this could be someone from your past with the fool reference that wants to perhaps take a leap of faith towards you. Um, maybe this is someone who was a fool in the past. Maybe they didn't see your worth and value initially, and now they see you uh, in this whole new light. They feel there's something that's really like mag netically drawing them to you and maybe this is something they can't figure out um there's also this sense that this person does feel like they could have a really good um like they could have a good life a stable life a happy life with you because with that paradise i just feel like they feel like they could have you know some sort of some joy you know some some beautiful um experiences with you spiritual partnership is here 27 so this is a spiritual partnership a kindred spirit a past life love the yang to your yin this 27 that reduces to nine so this is that same person you know that we saw in the beginning who was trying to find equilibrium somebody that you are not communicating with someone that could have been foolish in the past overlooked you and you set guard, you set your boundaries, you definitely set up your defenses. And this person is feeling foolish because now they see you living this lack of, you know, this, this you know, lap of luxury or you, they see you enjoying life. Um, this person definitely uh, wants to come in and change the situation because they feel there's something more deep and profound about the connection with 61 and the seven. There's a sense that this person sees that you love yourself. And when you love yourself, that makes you more attractive. That also teaches other people how they have to treat you because they see that you are treating yourself like you are, like it is your birthright to live in abundance, to have opulence, to be treated like royalty. So they're going to come in and match that energy. They're going to come in and match your fly. Remember, super duper flies. So somebody that was probably trying to play it cool, too cool for school, um, wasn't really asserting themselves, wasn't really approaching you in the way that they should have. It's like you, you, you created a boundary. You blocked off all communication or all access to this person. And that's what really had them in a heart space where they were longing for you and yearning for you. 
And so with this 27 now, I feel this person realizes there's something very deep about the connection they have with you. And there's something very real um, about how they feel. And maybe them playing it too cool, you know, is, you know, them kind of self-sabotaging. But now they want to reapproach because now they see your value. They want to hold on to this connection because obviously with spiritual partnership, it is very, um, it's profound. This isn't just your typical, you know, um, you know, attraction. This is someone that you have synergy and chemistry with someone that you have a very spiritual connection with where you may communicate with this person telepathically. Um, they may be just as intuitive, just as psychic. I feel they're also working on themselves as well. Um, maybe they're also learning to be more, um, you know, to assert themselves and to be more focused on self-love, self-care. Maybe they were also dealing with partners that took them for granted or maybe there was a belief system that they needed to change but this self-love is showing that there is a, a sense of um, discipline uh, when it comes to respect dignity loyalty uh, when it comes to you know maybe this connection overall and maybe how they need to uh, approach you and with 61 I feel that they're going to approach you with a different type of um, MO. It's going to be a completely different version of um, of themselves. Uh, with the synchronicity, I do feel like this is somebody that's on the same wavelength and vibration. So we have change and then we have forgiveness here. So the divine is telling you to forgive someone. Um, we have nine, um, 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 we have 96 forgiveness and then we have five change. So there is an opportunity for the situation to change through forgiveness. This is about showing compassion, love, and, you know, focusing on the love and light, um, and for, while forgiving. And I feel like that will bring forth some sort of change because we got new beginnings on the bottom of the deck. So there can be a possibility or an opportunity to, have a new start or a new beginning with someone. Um, you know, it's like something has come full circle, but all of the parties have been working on themselves. You've grown personally. Someone's learned to love themselves. Um, and so these changes, in addition to forgiveness, can, you know, absolutely, um, it can manifest or bring forth some sort of new opportunity, new love, um, new opportunity in love. Uh, we have Brian McKnight, and it says you should be mine. So somebody definitely feels that you should be theirs. And we have the mother of baskets on the bottom of the um, hoodoo deck. And the way she's looking, she's just very beautiful. She has these long hair, this beautiful long hair. She's smiling and she's just, you know, giving, extending herself. So that's the energy of that beautiful, um, you know, water energy. Just very loving, very nurturing you know, very accepting, very compassionate, just kind, caring, um, and tender. And the smile will just warm the hearts of anybody. So this is why somebody feels you should be theirs because now they're seeing you in your light, you know, and the Ace of Cups is here on the split. So the Ace of Cups and the Mother of Baskets, somebody is in love with you and they feel like you should be theirs. Um, this is somebody that's been learning, um, like I said, through this process with the Daughter of Sticks, that's like the page of sticks. I feel somebody's going to communicate that they want you to be theirs, that they want to be in a real connection. We have Miss Ida. I feel you know that, you know, Miss Ida is the high priestess. So I feel like, you know, like, because I do sense that you all are very sensitive psychically. You not only read body language, you read energy. You could pick up on energy, you speak energy, but you're also very sensitive psychically, intuitively. Um, it's like you are tapped into that Christ consciousness. And I feel like there, you, with you being in that high priestess energy, it's like you can, I was hearing the word undercurrent. So it's like you could see beyond the veil. You could see what's hidden. You could see beyond, you know, the illusion. Um, and that's what I'm picking up on as you're trusting and going with that gut instinct, that gumption. And it's 2121. I got my computer on the um, military time. So it says 2121. That's three, three, that's six. So you're very sharp intuitively. You trust your intuition and you use discernment with everything you do, whether that's, you know, making everyday decisions in 
your personal life or even in your job, your career, even within your friendships, your family dynamics, your connections. It's like you always trust what you feel. You go again. You don't go against the grain. You go according to how something feels and how it sits in your spirit. So I do feel like you've you've learned. This is a skill that you've um, you've elevated in, you know, because this is we're about to clarify teaching and learning. So you've elevated that skill that that um, and elevated into that position. So there's a sense of like, you know, see, you've reached a higher level of awareness, if you will. And with teaching and learning by you ascending into that role. It's like other people are watching how you are making these transformations or how you've emerged uh, someone very sharp, someone very strong, someone who has self-love, someone very um, empowered. And that is really inspiring and encouraging um, other people around you. The Ace of Baskets is on the back of the deck. You do have new love coming in. And this is a love the divine is blessing you with, which is why I feel spiritual partnership came out because I feel like the divine is assigning you someone in particular. And this person is being assigned for you as well. So you're being assigned to someone. Someone's being assigned to you because with you should be mine. It's like somebody and the way the um, it's like somebody's going to be running towards you. This is somebody that's going to be coming in. They're going to be coming in very quickly, assertively, because on the album cover, Brian McKnight appears to be running like on a highway. And remember, we had that seven personal growth and then seven sixty one, which reduces to seven self love. And I was picking up on like the chariot energy. You know, the chariot moves quickly, but the chariot can't move unless somebody is very mentally strong very balanced, knows what they want. And then they come in courageous and assertive. And that's like a yes answer. So with strength here, clarifying, I'm sorry, with the strength card, um, I feel like somebody is mustering up the strength and the courage, just as I said, uh, coming in assertively. We have the John horse. So that's the emperor. Remember, we was picking up on that number four energy with 13. Uh, the effort, that's the person that was feeling very like, you know, almost like um, the authoritarian. Maybe they weren't as giving or as reciprocal. Uh, maybe they didn't, you know, assert themselves or maybe they weren't as attentive or affectionate. Um, John Horse, this is the emperor energy. Um, this is the masculine. Maybe you have someone that's coming in that's going to match, match your fly, your vibration, because with 57, that reduces to 12, which is three. That's the empress. So you've taught this divine masculine how to come towards you. Maybe you've taught them your love language. Maybe that's something they didn't know. Maybe they realize that your love language is, you know, for them to match your vibration, your energy, your fly by being just as loving, open, vulnerable. Um, and they're, you know, trying to come in and show you that they want a new start. This new beginning is here. We have the ace of sticks. So that's like somebody that has a lot of passion for you. Someone that could have a lot of intimate thoughts about you as well. We have J. Cole, and this is called, um, feature, uh, this is Boss featuring J. Cole, and it's called Tribe. So I do feel like this is somebody that is a member of your soul tribe, your soul family. This is a, a kindred spirit. Um, this person's coming in with a, a love offer and even an apology uh, because they've learned something about you and this connection. They've learned something about what they want, and maybe they're realizing they could have missed an opportunity because the divine himself was offering this love and they could have been very blase about it uh, because maybe everything in their mind, like all the boxes in their mind wasn't ticked off. And so they didn't feel, you know, um, like the connection uh, was worth their time. I mean, to be blunt. And so now in your absence, now that you're setting, you know, you've set boundaries, there's no communication. It's like now this person is really longing for the connection. Now they're really starting to pick up just how deep their emotions go. Now they're starting to realize like, damn, that's possibly the one that got away. Now they're starting to realize I may have missed an opportunity with Scorpio, especially being as though you're very guarded. Now you're not really communicating. They're not really, you know, up to date with the goings on in your life. So it's like now their, your absence is, is, is uh, strongly felt. And so now they are really, really wanting to, um, communicate. 
So we have the four of knives here, teaching and learning. So yes, this person has also uh, taken a book or two out of your, taken a page or two out of your book. Like I said, they've been watching you from a distance. Um, and with this four of knives, this is like, you know, really doing some deep dives and introspective work. Uh, this is also taking accountability, taking onus, um, realizing how someone may have self-sabotaged a connection. Um, this is after the, the, you know, the aftermath of heartbreak, sudden loss, emotional loss, pain, agony. This is the aftermath of that. Now there's deep reflection. Now there's a sense of even grounding oneself. You know, um, he's sitting back on his back, looking up into the into the sky. So it's as if he's looking for, uh, you know, some insight, some foresight into the future. Uh, with tribe, I do feel this is someone you have a very strong connection with. This is someone a part of your tribe. This can strongly indicate a past life love. Um, with the four of knives, you're heavily on this person's mind. And they're also trying to figure out a master plan to come to communicate with you. Because they do want to rebuild and repair uh, this connection. But their first priority is to recover from whatever... Um, disappointment they've experienced uh so there is a sense of like they're they're learning to lick their wounds to do some self-analyzing uh to to you know gain some self-awareness and to also you know reflect on perhaps some of the mistakes they could have possibly made within the connection with you uh once they see this once they start to take onus and accountability they can move on um into a space where they'll be able to uh be more assertive um, the son of knives, this is like the page of knives. So this page of knives, that's letting me know this person is watching you. That's why teaching and learning is here. And then you got the four of swords. So they're taking notes. You know, it's like you don't realize that you're teaching others, um, but you actually are Scorpios. You guys are, I feel like a lot of you are healers, you're shamans, you're light workers. I feel like a lot of you are chosen, you're initiates. Uh, the divine has absolutely chosen you, handpicked you to help inspire, encourage, motivate, heal the collective. Um, and that's what you are doing, whether you realize it or not. Even if it's just that person across the way that feels inspired by you um, or that family member that really is, you know, they try to to um, emulate you in some way out of just appreciation. You know, they try to take those steps the same way you may have because you've inspired them. Little do you know, but this person that you're attracting, your your spiritual partner, your kindred spirit, they're also watching you and they're also learning from you. And what they're learning is that they have to do some reflecting. They have to do some introspective work, some internal work before they can move forward because you have to heal yourself in order to love yourself because love is an inside job. So as long as you're not doing those things, you're always gonna be projecting, you're always gonna be running from problems opposed to confronting them, dealing with them, and then eliminating them. So this person is realizing that now. They've learned a lot from you. And it's because you are that mama. You know, you're in that feminine energy, that divine feminine energy, that empress energy. So you have that very loving, nurturing, maternal, uh, energy, even if you're a masculine, uh, you're inspiring someone because they see your strength. They see how hard you work. They see how persistent you are, how much of a go-getter you are. You are someone resourceful, practical. You're someone that knows how to plant seeds to take care of your family. You know, you build, you know, you don't destroy. And someone's watching from a distance. This is someone that really wants to communicate, wants to express themselves. We have, um, we have um, Oshun and this is called solar plexus. So this is someone trying to muster up the courage. You know, we just saw the strength card. So they're trying to muster up the strength, the courage, the wisdom to approach you. It can be a little intimidating, especially if somebody sees you as the empress or as the emperor. So they could be taking their time, trying to get it right, trying to strategize, trying to make the move the right way. Um, and they're watching. They're just kind of watching for the opportune time to do so. So let's see. Why is personal growth here for my beloved Scorpios? We have a message of love and light, divine spirit. So we have the five of baskets. So this is someone deep regret, remorse, pain, 
agony. Um, they're feeling this regret because now you have ascended. Like I said, they're seeing you in a completely different light. You're radiating love, light, confidence. You could be in the spotlight. They could see you as someone very, they could be starstruck. I heard starstruck very loud in my mind's eye. And so they're in awe. And so this is just making you even more attractive. Um, and it's also bringing them more anxiety the more they see you in this light because they fear someone else kind of coming in and claiming you. So this person is really longing um, for you and regretting their decision to walk away because remember the four of cups showed up and now they're realizing that you were, you know, that diamond in the rough. You was that rare breed. You was the one that was, you know, that got away. And so now they're really feeling um heavy remorse for some of the decisions they've made. The bottom of the deck, we got Gula Jack. So this is a sacrificial position that the divine has put them in. So like that's again, chiming in on the teaching and learning. So they're learning perhaps not to look at the superficialities or just the external um, things. This is about going deeper than the external, which is why spiritual partnership is here. This person's realizing that it isn't just about money, beauty. It isn't about appearance. It isn't about what everybody else thinks. This is about what's good for your soul. This is about you receiving soul food, having a soul connection, having that kindred spirit or a soulmate connection. This person is seeing you from a completely different perspective now. They have been forced in the sacrificial position because Gula Jack is literally in a position where he's looking at things, you know, from a, you know, from the, 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 from the, how do you say it? You know, looking at things from flip side. That's how, thank you, spirit. So they're seeing things from the flip side, which is a completely viewpoint, you know, vantage point. And so now they're realizing that, damn, this is a spiritual partnership. I have a chemistry with Scorpio that I don't share with anyone else. You know, we have this synergy. We have this this very common thread between the two of us where we can finish one another sentences. We have the same type of likes. We have the same type of humor. We are involved in the same type of activities. We love the same type of music. This person thinks of you all the time. They think of you so much that it's like they're starting to see you in their dreams and in their dreams there seems to be some sort of connection or union we have the number 27 so i do feel this person may suffer from insomnia we have patrice russian and this is called where there is love so where there is love is you know that's where the home the heart is Love is where the heart is. And I feel like this person realizes their heart is with you. And they're realizing that because of your absence. Your absence is heavily felt. And this is what they are longing for. And so this person seeing something from a different perspective. So why is spiritual partnership here for my beloved Scorpios? They have a message of love and light. And we have Black Herman. So yeah, this person is trying to manifest you back. This is someone trying to manifest you back into their lives. We got the father of knives. They're going to muster up the courage to communicate. This person is very aware of, you know, their feelings. They're very aware of what they want. They're manifesting you or you could be manifesting them. I feel this is um, coming into fruition very soon because this is a spiritual partnership. And with the king of um, swords, the father of swords, I feel divine timing is of the essence because I see a lot of. Um, clocks inside of what appears to be um, it looks like it's a some sort of basket or it's it's like clocks and then I see a sword and the sword is 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 downward so that's just letting me know there is no communication but these clocks are indicating that in divine timing this communication will take place but it's once someone learns to love themselves or once someone realizes that them being assertive is a part of self-love because you're going after what you feel you deserve. That's why the word believe, you know, that song believe was playing by Q-Tip uh, featuring D'Angelo. So it's like somebody has to believe they can and they will. So it's almost like you got to change your mind and you'll change your reality. And with this 
magician showing up. It's like someone realizes they are the magician, that they can co-create with source. They become aware of the power they possess to manifest perhaps this spiritual partnership. And with Patrice Russian, where there is love, this person realizes that love is with you. When they're with you, that's where love resides. That's where love is. I feel like they see you as like soul food. And with 61-7, this person is now going to assert themselves. They're going to initiate contact, communication. They're going to spark a conversation, maybe via a text, a email. You know, that's the way people communicate. Maybe they'll pop up in your DMs or they'll pop up in some sort of mail messaging service and just hit you up randomly, unexpectedly. Why is this self-love here for Scorpios? We have the mother of knives. See that? And we have the John horse. So that, that's the emperor and the queen of swords. So this is what somebody's doing. They're trying to muster up the strength because they feel that you're guarded. They feel that you're very, very defensive. And so what they're doing is they're mustering up their own strength to come towards you because the emperor isn't afraid of nobody. The emperor is very um, intentional. The emperor goes after what he wants. He's confident. He's passionate. He's strong. He's the man's man. You know, he is the epitome of the divine feminine. So they're coming in literally matching your fly, matching your vibration. Because remember, the energy, you know, that I was picking up with this 57 teaching and learning was the empress. And then... You have John Horse, which is the emperor, and they're matching your energy. And the card they're clarifying is self-love. So this person realizes you're guarded because you love yourself, because you're not willing to um, sacrifice your peace, your happiness. You're not willing to just open up to someone that's going to come in and destroy what you've been building and destroy the work that you've been you know, um, initiating on yourself. So this person is coming in very, very much matching your vibration. And so this will be more, this will be easier for you to be open to the experience because now you see that somebody is coming in, speaking your love language and matching your energy. We have Nipsey Hussle, Rising Power King, and this is called Million While You Young. You know, so this person in the past, I feel like this person is going to, you know, try to because it says while you young. So maybe this is somebody that was very immature in the past and they've matured. You know, now they've matured. This is the self-love. So now they're coming in with this confidence. They're coming in intentionally, passionately, powerfully. And, you know, the queen of swords and the, and the emperor that, that y'all both can have a banter. It's like they're going to match your energy. So they're coming in to match your energy because that emperor can also be very stern and stoic and, you know, seen as, as um, you know, very cocky. But the queen of swords doesn't put up with any of the shenanigans. So that that's the energy that you come in to after you have some sort of transformation after that, you know, that very um unexpected upheaval, uh, whether that was in re relation to your love ships, friendships, relationships, or even, you know, a work situation where there was a lot of drama, toxicity, gossip, jealousy, and envy, or someone trying to be a stick in your wheel, trying to block your blessings or block you from other opportunities. It's like you've, you've risen, you've emerged as a queen of swords, someone very guarded, um, someone who doesn't take too kindly uh, to someone trying to insult her intelligence either. Um, you're checking for red flags. You're checking for, you know, masks. You're checking for fake fugazi energy. You're checking for the snakes. You're cutting your grass with that sword to make their, make sure there's no snake slithering that, you know, none of these enemies, these hidden enemies, um, are going to strike. So it's like you're very sharp witted and this emperor is coming in, you know, with all the bells and whistles to try to match your fly and your vibration with father Sims. This is temperance on the bottom of the deck. So this is the divine bringing things into balance, bringing everything into harmony. Remember I was seeing the clocks on the uh, king of swords uh, card and then the queen of swords flew out. So the king of swords with the clocks, I was feeling something was happening in divine timing. And with the five change, that means that there is absolutely change. There's some moderations, alterations. There's some changes that are taking effect, but it's happening in divine timing. It's happening once you find balance and equilibrium and the person that you're attracting 
finds balance and equilibrium. And then the two of you will align in divine timing when you both are uh, prepared and ready for one another. So this change is going to be a positive change. I feel the communication that you have with this person is going to be very, very enlightening. Um, it's going to be very honest. I feel someone's going to be very transparent, more transparent than they may have ever been. Um, if this is someone that you already know, I feel that you're going to see the change in this person the same way they see the change in you, which is what sparked them encourage them, motivated them to start doing their work so that they can match your flying vibration. I feel this change is also going to lead to you being more expressive or this connect, this person being more expressive with their feelings, more vulnerable, more open, because now they've learned to appreciate their emotions, um, Whereas in the past, they may have tried to suppress it. They may not have wanted to show emotion or show that they have feelings or express their feelings because that was something that could have been shown as a sign of weakness. Uh, maybe this was like that alpha male, that man's man, someone that grew up around a bunch of guys that were very like uh, chauvinistic, you know, or maybe they just grew up at a time where, you know, that male dominance, that, that male figure didn't include, like I said, vulnerability or emotions, you know, emoting. Um, and so now that's something that has changed. And this change was triggered by you. Change was enacted uh, because or inspired because of what you've done. So now with Father Sims, temperance, things have been tempered out, you know, emotions, um, now there's a sense of seeing things more clearly. Um, and now there's this, this air, this opportunity of expressing one's truth. Um, so let's see why is change here for my beloved Scorpios. We have a message of love and light, divine spirit. Why is change here? Thank you, spirit. And we have the 10 of knives. So the 10 of knives is deceit. It's sabotage. It's a painful ending, a loss. It's also feeling like you've, you've, You've been um, betrayed to the point of, you know, it feeling almost like a death. You know, the Ten of Swords to the back is really, um, that is the highest vibration of, you know, what pain would feel like. Pain and agony. That also speaks to a completion of something. So something that was very painful has come to an end. The Daughter of Knives, this is like the Page of Swords. So this is someone who's now gossiping. There's a lot of people discussing some sort of circumstance. Maybe your name is rolling off the tongues of a bunch of people who are very jealous and envious. People who are potentially trying to sabotage you, set you up. Maybe there's people who thought that they killed you and then you've emerged as that phoenix rising. Or someone who has gone through a rebirth. Uh, reincarnated as someone stronger. You've re-emerged as someone stronger, someone powerful, someone more beautiful, someone more confident. This is feeling very much like liberation because the changes you've made has enacted some new cycle. New cycle of life is happening. Five is the throat chakra. So now there's more expression. We have main source and it's called fake in the funk. So a lot of these people were fakes, fugazis, frenemies, enemies. These were snakes in the grass. Like I said, people that were trying to set you up with the Ten of Swords. You felt deep betrayal, deep hurt, deep pain. And this was really like um, the death of something. This was like that final knife in the back really was like it's done. There's no coming back. There's no returning. There's no reconciling um, from these betrayals because these were very intentional um, these were very malicious uh, and very hateful energies that were working against you. That's why you're very guarded. That's why you're not as open to other people. Um, you have to see how you feel. You got to see how your energy feels. So you're not as trusting of words um, and you're definitely not going according to what other people think. Um, or what society says, the so the, you know the societal standards. You're going according to how things feel and sit in your spirit solely. And once something doesn't sit right, you're off it. With this energy, you've changed after this death. After this death, 
Scorpios transform and then they go through that rebirth. That rebirth represents the rejuvenation. That represents the reemergence, the, recu the recuperation uh, of your energy, your spirit after the demise of these connections. Now you're a part of everyone's conversation with the daughter of knives. There's on this card, there's like hands pointing at this feminine energy. Um, there's people looking and lurking from the backgrounds. And with this um, song, we have the roots proceed. So it's like you're still proceeding to move forward, upward and onward. You're not getting sidetracked, distracted. You're not letting anybody throw you off your square or throw you out of equilibrium. Because like I said, now you got your eyes on the prize and you're focused, you're determined. And it's because you believed you could get out of a situation and you did. You remained hopeful of your circumstance improving and it did. You stayed praying sending up prayers, petitions, daily affirmations, just planting your feet in the ground, being grounded, being in the moment, finding balance and not getting sidetracked by the distractions. And that's why you've recovered. That's why you've transformed. That's why you've gone through some sort of personal growth because whatever was determined to kill you, it only made you stronger. And you discovered like if something isn't growing within your dynamic, whether that be at a job, you've been just stuck and stagnant at a job because of some hateful, jealous ass supervisor or because you got help hating ass coworkers, colleagues, you know, running these gossip trains within the environment and that's influencing your supervisor, overlooking you for positions that you're highly or overqualified for. It's like you cut those things out of your life. You may have walked away from those relationships. If you had fake friends that were smiling in your face, but talking behind your back to other people, running your business that you've shared to, with them in confidence to other people that you didn't talk to and you discovered that you cut them off and out of your life. There's no communication. It's like there was this growth this growing pain that you've had to endure. And so now everybody is talking about you, but you are proceeding to push forward. You're proceeding to succeed. And that's what these people can't stand. So why is forgiveness here for my beloved Scorpios? 96 forgiveness. Ooh, that flew up, baby. And this is the seven of baskets. So forgive somebody who was treating you like an option I feel like somebody had you up in your head so much that you was like you was starting to believe that you weren't good enough because they was giving you very little time, very little attention. They were not very, um, very focused on you per se. They was just running around, running amok and enjoying their their freedom. It was like somebody that was noncommittal, somebody that was for everybody. And I feel like that kind of had you up in your head to the point where you may have gotten like really frustrated with this person, um, very angered by this person's mistreatment of you. And this could have been in your head for a while, like really, you know, feeling uh, very, um, like I said, frustrated with the connection because of being someone treating you like an option and then proceeding to just, you know, go around and breadcrumb and and have these extracurricular activities, all these shenanigans, you know, happening on the side. But I feel there's a sense of you like washing yourself free from this because now you realize that you deserve more. Um, you deserve love. Uh, and you also realize you had to love yourself. Self-love is more attractive. And love is an inside job. So I feel like you started to focus more on self-care. Your higher self said, don't focus on that person. Don't focus on the reason why they're cheating because that'll lead you down that rabbit hole and you'll be stuck in the labyrinth. Like focus on self-love, self-care. Focus on you, on who, what you desire, what you require. Um, because that six is... Um, the lovers in traditional tarot and in order for you to attract love like i said you have to be love you have to exude love you know what i'm saying because you attract what you are and the lovers represents balance masculine feminine so when you're all one thing there's there's imbalance and i feel like divine told you look forgive those because they know not what they do but focus on loving you you know when you love yourself you teach other people how they must come to the table to treat you. 
And so that's why somebody's coming to the table, matching your energy, that empress energy with that emperor energy. So the self-love helped you to be more forgiven of those people. Nine, six reduces to 15, that's six. So you're now in a space where you're loving yourself. And so now you are more susceptible to attracting someone that's going to be your spiritual partner, just like the card says here, because you're manifesting it. Visualizations, speaking those words of affirmation, writing in your manifestation journals, enacting whatever whatever, um, you know, co-create, whatever it is you're doing, whatever ritual spells that you may be doing to call in love generally is what's manifesting this beautiful love. You got the ace of coins on the bottom of the deck in my hand. So this is not only going to be emotionally fulfilling for you. It's also going to be financially fulfilling. You're going to be in a very stable, very solid, very healthy relationship with someone. And this is someone you're going to build a family with. This is someone you're going to grow with. This is someone that's going to be your homie, lover, friend. This is someone that you may get into a very long-term commitment, become married. This is someone that you're going to have that happy house, happy spouse. You're going to build a legacy with this person. And it's because spiritual partnership is here. So both of you may be spiritualists, practitioners. You may be, um, in the realm of spirituality in some way, and you may forge together to build some sort of partnership to help build the collective. You're being assigned this person. There's no denying that this person is being assigned to you and you are being assigned to them. So let's pull some messages from my deck and then we're going to wrap it up. So let's see what we got here. And so we have Harlem River Drive and this is by Hob Bobby Hemphrey. So some of you all, this person could be just driving around thinking of you. Maybe there's going to be um, someone traveling. Someone may have to drive to come and visit you. Um, you may be traveling to go see someone. So I just feel like somebody's going to invite you out. And there's going to be, you know, maybe you're going to drive. Um, you know, that y'all going to be driving around in the car. So we have kings, queens, disease, gluttony, power, hungry. So this is what's coming out. We got teaching and learning, four of knives, and then kings, queens, disease, gluttony, power, hungry. So you had to teach somebody who thought that they, fe they felt very entitled. Um, this is somebody, like I said, that could have potentially been very materialistic um, or just superficial, you know, just very um, delusional, <laughs> you know. And so they had to be taught something. Um, Somebody that saw you as a king or a queen and felt entitled to whatever it is you had with the four of swords. I feel somebody is really looking back, reflecting on perhaps their behavior, on how greedy they were, how much they expected from you, but how little they gave. And so now there's the sense of, like I said, just kind of taking accountability, taking responsibility for the demise of something, um, realizing they didn't appreciate you. They didn't appreciate the connection for what it was. They were hungry. They wanted more. Even though you were the empress, you weren't good enough in their eyes. They wanted to still dip their toe. They still wanted to go into the cookie draw. They still wanted to look for more options. And so now there's deep reflection on the bottom of the deck. It says drink more water, exercise, take a nature walk, jog, yoga, meditate, ground yourself. So with this personal growth, that's what we're about to clarify and the five of baskets. So I feel like that's what a lot of you did. You started to focus on self care. And as I said earlier, when you self, when you focus on self care, that makes you more attractive. And so now this person in the five of baskets is starting to regret that they've let a dime piece slip away because of their greed, because of their gluttony, because of their entitlement, their immaturity. Um, now that you've grown, this is making you far more attractive. Maybe some of you all have lost some weight. I'm hearing 30 pounds. Some of you all have some sort of goal to lose like a hundred pounds. Maybe during these past couple of years, you may have packed on the weight because of the stress, because of, you know, just the 
you know, this, the whole CV had everybody trapped in the house. So it's like some of you all may have gained some weight and now you're being more uh, mindful, more healthy. You're taking care of your physical body, your vessel, uh, your avatar, and now you're more attractive. Some of you could have changed your appearance. Like I said, you may have had long hair in the past. You could have cut it or you could have been dyeing your hair, trying to hide your grays, and now you're just embracing it. But this is making you attractive because you just naturally are glowing and you have this confidence now that you've never had because you're just very accepting of who you are. It's like self-love makes you more attractive. When you love yourself, that's an inside job and then you will radiate that love. So now somebody's regretting losing you. They could be driving around thinking about you. We have mistress. Mr. Stress, it's what they call me, and I answer to it, no shame. So somebody definitely chose another option, a third party, um, and that's why they're regretting because perhaps that third party led them down a road of misery and, and stress and anxiety. It wasn't as as uh, beautiful, you know, rainbows and unicorns as they thought. They thought it was going to lead to some sort of victory. Um, maybe this person with Harlem River Drive, this per this mistress drove them crazy. Um, and this is why, you know, they could have you heavily on their mind, kind of reminiscing, thinking back um, and just feeling, you know, almost like they've missed that opportunity. They let a real dime piece slip away because now they see your growth. Um, they see you in a, a light that they've never seen before. Um, we, we have it's the chemistry for you, the inherent chemistry and we got spiritual partnership and the magician here which is uh, what we're about to clarify and on the bottom of the deck it's the chemistry for you the inherent chemistry so like I said when you bump into your divine counterpart the spiritual partner this is going to be something that you feel like your body's going to get warm you're going to feel yourself heating up the energy, the chemistry, the electro, you know, magnetic wave, like waves is going to be on like it's going to be amplified because there is a chemistry. There is a synergy. This is something that you feel and you will know when you meet this person. Um, if you've met this person already, that's the person when you first met them, you just felt there was something more deeper than um, meets the eye about the connection. Um, and maybe there was almost like a runner chaser because it was too intense for someone else. Uh, but I feel for you, you are going to know um, there. You're both going to know you're their person and they're your person because of the chemistry. Uh, like I said, this is going to be that person that you you bump into. And y'all are going to just have like a two, three hour conversation just off the rip. Um, this is the type of person where when you have this conversation, you're going to feel like you knew this person all your life. There's just going to be a sense of familiarity and similarity to one another's story. It's just going to be this thread, this common thread that the two of you share in addition to these deep emotions and feelings that you just can't explain. Um, I'm feeling past life vibes for real, for real. Like this could be somebody you met in a former life. Um, and you all are now coming back into alignment. Um, but the chemistry is going to be undeniable between you and this person. Um, I just saw the success card. So you definitely have some unexpected money coming in. And we have Untitled Fantastic Plan by Slum Village. So something is going to turn out very beautifully. I'm just feeling like it's going to be very beautiful uh, because this is something you've been manifesting and it's coming in divine timing. Um, and so we have he, she is the one that got away. Can't shake this feeling. I cannot make this up. He, she is the one that got away. Can't shake this feeling. This is the first card I picked up because three of them fell out. So let me show you what we have because I want you to see this. You know me. I like to show sometimes when the messages just be like, bam. So see that this is what we have right here. So spiritual partnership, the magician, and he, she is the one that got away. Didn't I say that this is somebody that when you bump into this person, it's just going to be a sense like you knew them or somebody that has already chose another option over you is going to realize after the fact in your absence through the ghosting period, through no communication, through the separation that you're the one that got away because their feelings for you haven't, it hasn't changed. 
You know what I'm saying? Usually if you're in another partnership and someone's out of sight, out of mind, it's like those feelings will, you know, eventually just dissolve. It'll be like, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, do, you never even met them. But for some reason, this person's feelings have intensified. And it's because you're the one that got away. You're the one. They can't shake the feeling they had for you. This person's trying to manifest you back into their life. And it says they love, it says they love you to the moon and back. This is what's on the bottom of the deck in my hand. I cannot make this up. So this person definitely feels you're the one that got away and they love you to the moon and back. We're about to have the lunar eclipse. So this is something that's going to be exposed, you know, after, you know, you know, during this lunar eclipse, this, this, this is going to come to light because it says untitled and fantastic. This is by slum village. So this is someone that's a part of your soul family. This is a part of your village. This is someone that is in fact, that, that one that got away. And I feel like, you know, with this energy here, you know, this is someone who's really, um, sending messages to you telepathically, intuitively, just trying to keep the lines of communication open with you in a spiritual, on a spiritual, um, strength, like spiritually, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Cause this person has learned with self love here. And then we got the queen of swords along with the, um, the emperor, this person is really like up in their head a lot because we have mental health matters. Stop overthinking. So this person is really up in their head a lot. Thinking 61 self-love. This person is thinking about the situation, um, thinking about what moves they need to make. That's going to be beneficial to them. That's going to be conducive to their betterment. So maybe they feel like they need to cut off somebody that's been very toxic. You know, maybe this person is just kind of trapped in their head thinking and they're not acting. They're not communicating their feelings. They're not communicating their desires. But I feel because this emperor energy is here, now they're going to find that strength. And now they're going to be more action oriented. They're going to get out of that, that mental space and they're going to be more action oriented. And we have Jason and this is by Jadakus. And this is um, some of you all could be dealing with somebody named Jason but I do feel like this is somebody, the name of the album is called Top 5 Dead or Alive. You know, so this person, this is someone that, you know, they they really are trapped in, you know, mental conflict. And I do feel like they're kind of like in the sunken place. And they really need to get out of that space. Because, you know, maybe they're still overthinking, you know, how the connection was lost. And so they're thinking about the death of the connection and not how they can resuscitate or how they can you know, recapture those, those moments. This person could also be thinking about a death of a partnership or relationship with a mistress that was very, very, um, that that's weighing very heavily on them, um, as well, because we're about to clarify change and 10 of knives. And we have, you know, this, this energy of mental health also here. So somebody's really up in their head. That's like ruminating, pining, overthinking, analysis, paralysis, just really thinking about some sort of betrayal, you know, but they've learned a lesson about self-love. That was something that they had to learn. You know, that was a, a, a blessing in disguise almost, you know, they had to go through that experience to learn how to love themselves or to learn what, you know, love wasn't. We have as above, so below, you are the alchemist. So this person has realized that they are co-creators. And so they're changing themselves from, you know, this, this state of being, you know, defeated and broken with the Ten of Swords to now looking at things clearly. They're also seeing really, you know, that they love you to the moon and back. So, you know, this betrayal, whatever this betrayal was by this mistress, whatever the hurt and pain they endured, it was like it wasn't for naught, you know. They're realizing that they have the ability to manifest the one that got away, to manifest that one that they have that chemistry with that can't, you know, that they can't shake those feelings for, which is you, Scorpio, because they love you to the moon and back. And the divine is reminding you, be forgiving, even if this person treated you in a way where you may have felt like um, you weren't good enough or you were just one of many. The divine is saying that, you know, with you forgiving and with you in a space knowing your own worth and value, you'll be able to feel if the love is genuine or real, you know, genuine or not. 
with dead or alive. It's like you have the ability to decide or determine whether you want to resuscitate this connection or just, you know, maintain this, 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 um, distance, this space. And so we have here, um, show them how to move in a room full of vultures and it says protected divinely. So you've shown your enemies, you know what I'm saying? You know, flawlessly, you know, how you move in a room full of vultures. And I'm hearing you're unbothered. You, it's like you smiled and forgave them all, forgave them all. You know what I'm saying? And that's why they're sitting there watching. And we got words of spells and spells bind, mind your words and stay protected. So now you got people trying to, I'm hearing, assassinate your character now. You know, now they're trying to assassinate your character. And these are vultures, enemies, frenemies. We got an emotional roller coaster ride time to get off. So a lot of y'all were stuck with people who were in, um, you know, secret competitions with you. These were people that were trying to like emotionally manipulate you, trying to make you feel responsible for their happiness, for their stability, their security. And you just said, pardon my back. And you started to focus on the self, you know. And it says, where do you see yourself in five years from now? If you don't know, create a vision board. So that's what you all did. You started to refocus and prioritize your needs and wants over these other people who were trying to keep you, um, you know, trying to live vicariously through you or trying to be parasites and leeches. And we have um, Flowetry Superstar. So this is people who see that you're a superstar. I feel like you are going to reach stardom with something that you do. It's like it's going to put you in the spotlight. I feel a lot of y'all are in the spotlight, but you have the Ace of Coins, New Beginnings, and this message of where do you see yourself in five years on the bottom of the deck for all of the cards I've pulled so far. So this is beautiful energy. I feel other people can see your, your star quality as well. So we're going to get some messages from the Psychic Tarot, and then we're going to wrap it up. All right. Bottom of the deck. Look at that. Prosperity begins. Can't make this up. So whatever it is you're doing, you're going to be a superstar. You're going to be rewarded. You're going to be, it's like wish fulfillment, blessings. You got memories of love and prosperity begins. So this Mercury retrograde is going to bring somebody from your past that's still holding on to you. That's still thinking of you. Fertility is here. The divine feminine. I was talking about the divine feminine empress energy. There she is. Va voila. So that's the energy that you are in. I feel like whatever, whoever was trying to put a stick in your will, trying to block some sort of blissing, cause some sort of delay or thwart some sort of plans that you had. The divine is removing that block because something is coming in full circle. There's a turning point. And I feel like this is something that's destined to happen because you've completed a cycle. Universe is the world card in the psychic tarot. So you've completed a cycle. You've leveled up. You've reached a more evolved perspective. You know what I'm saying? You have a deeper, more profound understanding of yourself, of your life, of your purpose, of your wish fulfillments and dreams and desires of your love language. This is a very evolved energy. So you've ascended and have grown. That's why teaching and learning came out. So you've learned how to navigate difficult situations, tough re relationships, love ships, tough situationships overall. We got rest and rejuvenate here. Remember the four of swords also came out underneath the teaching and learning with the king's disease. So it's like you had to recover from people who were like trying to trying to control you, trying to, you know, force you to do things that you didn't want to do or trying to make you feel responsible for, you know, their stability, their happiness. It's like people who felt entitled to things. You had to recover from that. You had to shake them off. You know what I'm saying? And you also had to do some deep diving to try to determine, like, how did you get to that point? Why did you allow something to happen for so long? So that requires like a lot of internal work, a lot of, you know, soul searching, a lot of healing, growing. And, and that's exactly what you did. So now there's, you know, someone who's suffering from mental conflict, you know, thinking about these connections, thinking about the demise, thinking of how they've sabotaged even the connection that they now desire so much they see you as a superstar because you've evolved to that role we got heart chakra here so somebody is really recovering from pain and loss this is a divine masculine because i have the number four heart chakra here and this is clarifying teaching and learning four of swords king's disease so someone definitely was in that energy of like that authoritarian not really showing emotion my way or the highway trying to be overbearing 
and you know feeling entitled like i said because that that emperor is someone that you know he rules empires so he doesn't take any type of orders he gives them so this is somebody that could have been very controlling but they've learned from you because you may have pulled away you know you had a very loving and soft approach whereas they had a very overbearing approach and I feel like you took some time out to heal from that, to recover. And also, like I said, to take onus and accountability for allowing something to something to get so out of hand, you know, especially when it comes to you, your feelings, your emotions. We got memories of love here. The number six. So this is someone that's really desiring you. That's missing you. As we saw, this is about we're about to clarify seven personal growth and five of baskets with mistress. So someone is holding on to you in this connection because that mistress couldn't fulfill them mentally emotionally spiritually they feel empty they feel like this lack in their life and they're holding on to you in this connection they look to you with the six i feel like this is a past love wanting to return because it's memories of love so this person the five of baskets that's someone that walked away chose something else and now they want to return because they realize they have this adoration for you this strong attraction for you this magnetic pull towards you so the mistress she, she had no shame in her game. So the waiting game. So somebody is waiting for the perfect time for perfect opportunity to just to rectify, excuse me, the situation. So why is spiritual partnership? The magician, he, she is the one that got away here. And we got passion ignited. See that this person's realizing their passions in your absence. Those feelings didn't go away. If anything, they grew, they intensified, and it got to the point where they were erupting within this person. And now they're trying to figure out how to manifest you back because it says he, she is the one that got away. And this is the spiritual partnership. So you cannot deny that. That's chemistry, synergy. That is a, a spiritual union. Your souls are intertwined. With emotional withdrawal, that's eight. So this is someone you walked away from, created space. Um, a sacred space and a protective space. So you're in a protective place because with the 27, I was feeling like you had to create a boundary because you gave so much of yourself only to receive very little. And so you set a boundary, you know, you set a guard there. And now this person can't stop thinking of you uh, because their feelings have intensified because passion has ignited. I was saying that they was feeling a lot of intimate thoughts as well like they were having intimate thoughts maybe if you were intimate with this person maybe in a past life or even in this life if you know who this is it's like they 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 continue to feel these feelings that these these feelings are growing they're not they're not um dissolving or dissipating and so you've taken time to heal yourselves to ground yourself to recover to recharge rejuvenate and that's the personal growth that's why divine timing was of the essence. Patience waiting game is about, you know, taking the right course of action, choosing the right course of action at the right time. I cannot make this ish up. We got mental health matters clarifying, you know, the 61 self love, the queen of swords. Remember that energy and then emotional roller coaster ride time to get off. And this was what this person we got mental conflict just flew out and I had to just go pick it up because it flew across the freaking room. And so mental conflict, somebody is up in their head. They're agonizing over this situation. Mental health matters is what the card says. And it says, stop overthinking. This person is thinking about you, thinking about this connection, because now they realize they sabotage. They made the wrong decision. This is the two. The two of swords is what I'm picking up. So they're stuck in two minds. One of the minds was, you know, trying to be someplace that they thought they wanted to be because maybe it looked good. It sound good. Maybe it's what everybody around them expected them to do. But deep down emotionally, it's it's causing a lot of angst, a lot of frustration. They're unhappy. They're disappointed. They're only thinking of you and desiring you and they're trapped in something else. So they're realizing they've sabotaged something that was, you know, absolutely a blessing from the divine as above. So below below uh, the ten of swords and change, we have disconnect and boredom, um, um, discontent, discontent and boredom. So now they realize like they have the absolute power to change the circumstance. You know, after going through this, this betrayal or this deceit, this deceit by these people, you know, this is being like backstabbed, sabotage, betrayed, tricked, gaslighted, mind upped. You know, and then something within them just like clicked. 
And they said, I got to change my circumstances. And the only way I could change my circumstance is by changing me, changing my mind, and then I could change my reality. So they get to focusing on being that magician. It says, as above, so below, you are the alchemist, the magi. So that means they gain that awareness. There was like a download. So they've learned to express themselves by utilizing their power, by utilizing that ability to transmute the pain they was feeling from the Ten of Swords. And so, you know, they could still be in the space of discontent and boredom because they feel trapped you know they're they're in a connection that they could have been trapped in or maybe the relationship they were trapped in they, there was a lack of um content a lack of energy positive energy um so why is okay thank you so we got moving on beautiful so they mustered up the strength courage and wisdom and ultimately the power to move on and the other cards that flew out is beautiful we have uh, financial and material changes. So this person is moving on out of this situation. This is like the six of swords saying, okay, I'm moving away. They could be even coming to travel to see you. This is somebody who could be physically moving from a particular area, um, relocating, uh, but they're absolutely moving out of a dark period and coming into a more lighter vibration. And bam, we got new beginnings and new beginnings came out, uh, um, you know, is on the bottom of the, the numerology deck when I was done. So this person is absolutely, you know, with the zero, that's like the fool. So that's like starting over, you know, having that opportunity, starting at ground zero, uh, feeling very, you know, very inspired, encouraged, motivated to go forward, memories of love and fertility. So someone that holds you very near and dear in their heart. Uh, and we have um, troop. I will always love you. So I feel like this person is willing to troop to you. Back in the days, we used to say troop like, oh, damn, I'm about to troop, you know, up to such and such. You know, that's like I'm about to travel. I'm about to walk. When we used to troop, that was walking, <laughs> you know, so somebody is willing to, you know, to travel to see you uh, because they want to. Um, they want to manifest some sort of change in this connection. They want a new beginning. And it's because they've still holding on to the, to you, to the memories of love that the two of you may have created together, shared together. Uh, they see you as their divine feminine. The empress has come out. And I was saying 57 was like that empress energy. The solar plexus is um, in on the bottom of the deck three. So this is about power, strength. This is how they see you. Um, this is also what they're trying to muster up, the strength, the courage. Solar plexus also so played by Oshun. So this person is inspired um, by you. I feel like you trigger and activate them. We see that with teaching and learning. It's like you've you've taught them how to to stand erect, how to emote, how to express themselves, um, and also ultimately um, that change was necessary. You know, um, everything that you know change is inevitable, and you know there's no one that doesn't like change more than a Scorpio because we're fixed. But trust me, when it's time to change, when we see that, okay, this cannot stay the same, we will transform with the quick fastness. We become the shapeshifters. We become those that can, you know, adapt to our, our um, environment or to a circumstance. And that's what somebody has grown. Um, they've learned from you. Um, and this person is coming towards you. This person is coming in very lovingly, very caring, um, very kind, but they are working on their strength. They're working on mustering up the courage. So why is forgiveness the uh, seven of cups and show them how to move in a room full of vultures here for my beloved Scorpios. And then we're going right up. Thank you. Spirit bottom of the deck. We have transformation. I can't make this up. So your transformation has triggered someone. We have patience and planning. So this is something that is going to grow and develop with time. Something is going to transform in time. I feel like all of the seeds that you've been sowing have been sowed in good faith. And so there is a positive outcome. I feel like things are going to be improving for you. I feel like the divine is saying that good things take time to create. So continue to work on yourself. Continue to keep your eyes on the prize. Continue to do your due diligence. And I feel like you are guaranteed some level of success. The transformation this 13. You've emerged someone completely different. Someone sees you in a whole new light. Just as I've said. And your transformation has amplified you know, something in the in the air. It's triggered something within this person. It has made them feel this sense of motivation and encouragement to come towards you, to get out of their head uh, and to take action, to take action, to to uh, go after what they want, because their feelings are intensifying. They're growing. They're not 
dissolving by any means, not even by the 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 distance, the 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 lack of communication. Um, and this is why they know this is real. This is the real thing. Um, and this is possibly someone that you know or someone from past life. Uh, but this is what you have in the background. Somebody's going to come out of hiding. I feel during the lunar eclipse, and I feel like they're going to surprise you with something very shocking in terms of how they feel. Um, about you, about this connection, and I feel like you're going to be elated. I feel like this is a very profound connection. Um, this is not just somebody that's going to be in your life for a year or two. I feel like this is someone you're going to grow old with. You're going to get, grow better. You're going to build business. You're going to build a legacy um, and a happy family, a happy house, happy spouse type of vibe. So this is beautiful energy. I thank you all for tuning and tapping in. Happy Mother's Day again to you beautiful ladies out there, to you single fathers out there. Thank you for your job. Thank you for making this world a beautiful place, you know, by teaching your children and instilling your children certain cultures and values. Just give them them jewels and, and gems so that they can be great, you know, um, and be honest with your babies. Tell them the truth. Uh, there's ways to communicate the truth to your children, but never keep them in the dark thinking that you're helping them out or that you're protecting them. Always let them know what time it is. Keep them very, very aware. Um, but I thank you all so much for tuning and tapping in. Uh, if you are new, I hope you stay a while. If you are returning, beloveds, you already know what it is. Love is love is love. Please be kind. Hit that like, share and subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload. And until next time, I send a big fat ass shape. Peace.